Welcome back to another Raid Shadow Legends video with Blazing Corp. We are continuing our Doom Tower series. We are at stay we are at floor 120 and we are about to smash the Eternal Dragon next. <laughs> All right, we are here at the Eternal Dragon. This is the team comp that I have put together uh, here for your consideration. Uh, here, as you guys know, I love me some Deacon Armstrong. I've got a, a guide on him uh, there. He is fantastic. Turn meter control, uh, manipulation, their speed aura, their plus he is boosting. And this is really what we're using him for in this particular uh, level the speed boosting of the rest of our team uh, here, which is very important. We want to go ultra fast uh, here to uh, combat the uh, cooldowns uh, there and the uh, speed of this particular uh, dragon uh, here. Now, uh, also, his turn meter manipulation in terms of his reduction is going to help with the ads uh, there to make sure they don't take a turn uh, there as much as they would like to. Uh, there now Brago we both know sustain 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 uh, you know he's in here as our main damage dealer there um, although I think uh, Bad Alcazar is going to have uh, quite a bit of damage uh, output because he does a lot of AoE and then we have three passive healers here so passes are really important here because uh, this boss blocks works on blocking all your cooldowns and your skills uh, there so having the passive heals uh, here on uh, Doom Priest, uh, who is so, like I've had her in my vault forever. Never thought to build her out until this version of the Doom Tower came out. Now she is like pretty much on all of my teams. I'm going to have to do a guide on her, like a mid-tier gamer's guide on Doom Priest. I'm actually running her, and uh, you guys all know I've been uh, just praying for Scylla the Drakes uh, there uh, to get to my six month mark at 180 days uh, which I got to uh, yesterday uh, there and uh, pause for applause and uh, there who um, you know is just fantastic uh, she's probably one of the best uh, legendaries in the game uh, there I can definitely see uh, why she is so valuable and I've been wanting her forever so she is probably going to be a staple in most of my teams uh, there for the foreseeable future so uh, both her and Doom Priest have no masteries right now uh, there uh, as you know I uh, you know take my time building these guys up I'm not gonna be you know devoting crazy amount of resources it's gonna be little bit by little bit uh, there uh, as the uh, days are long uh, we will slowly build these guys up into beasts uh, there but gear is 100% important in these things so we've got them properly kitted uh, there in um, and an easy way, just so you guys know, an easy way to build out uh, champions uh, there with decent gear uh, is just going into the forge uh, there, you know, um, you know, putting perception gear or whatever gear that you have access to, uh, pull it uh, from the forge and get the highest level gear with, you know, the right stats on and then roll those up. It's also a good way to make cash uh, there as well. So that's what I did for these two. Got a lot of perception gear with uh, speed rolls uh, there on them. So they're running pretty decently fast. Uh, we've got Doom Priest at about 184. And some of the Drakes, I uh, can't remember actually. I believe she's at 200 or 210 uh, there. Bad Alcazar being the fastest and another passive healer plus cleanser. It's really important uh, that we have the two cleansers here. Uh, there so she's gonna do a passive cleanse plus heal 7.5% of uh, HP uh, there 
he's gonna do damage and then heal AoE plus uh, he has the uh, ability to clear buffs and put uh, continuous heals on uh, there so that's gonna help quite a bit along with his uh, leech from his a1 uh, there for Deacon so this is a really tight team uh, here to take on the 100 and floor final boss of the doom tower uh, here which uh, you know I spent a lot of time putting different comps together uh, there and uh, this one just worked seamlessly uh, here so um, let's get this started and see how it goes all right so uh, you know starting off with us versus some sea fees now uh, here we're just going to do a full auto of uh, this not going to manual anything here um, this team uh, run it and seems to be full auto 100% completion but uh, I guess we will see uh, here uh, in a test uh, that we're doing you know kind of on this video uh, see if um, this team rolls properly uh, regardless if they have their skills ready to go uh, as soon as they walk into the final boss fight all right so let's see here luckily he doesn't pull his ads out immediately like the nether spider so that's always nice uh, now one thing I do do here is I always make sure that my uh, my characters focus on the eternal priest that is one thing I do I uh, want to make sure that I um, you know kind of manual here at, even though it's auto and then I kind of you know pull their focus to each one of the other ads uh, there after that uh, that's the only thing I'm doing here to kind of uh, guide uh, my characters uh, here otherwise uh, what I found is that they they sort of tend to especially with their abilities uh, you know decrease defense leech stuff like that they end up going for the main boss and then sometimes that causes the boss to either heal or um, you know get his rage and we definitely don't want him getting his rage uh, there so we're gonna make sure we keep an eye on it uh, there and we keep focusing the eternal priest should show up here uh, on the next go around uh, do, 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 do. so you know, the good thing about this one uh, is having the leech on the main boss uh, there really helps and uh, the speed lead of deacon there makes everyone so much faster Plus the passive uh, here where she's going to put an increased speed on a random person. So um, these guys are kind of going to randomly be getting faster uh, there uh, as as they go along. So it's kind of neat uh, there on that end. Now main thing is uh, do make sure you come in with enough accuracy to land. Uh, your shots and your debuffs uh, here on the main boss or you will be having one hell of a time uh, here beating him uh, on that end now other comps I was trying uh, here um, you know bringing Astral on Countess Lix in uh, there um, but what I found is a support driven uh, team works quite a bit better than just a nuke team uh, at least with the champions that I have um, just because of the way like you can't really do proper setups so you're gonna have people who are really strong a1 wise uh, here um, so that way you don't have to worry about if you get provoked or you get your block uh, cooldown skills not that they stay on there for too long uh, here with Doom Priest and Bad Alcazar uh, kind of trading uh, cleaning debuffs uh, there but it is uh, something important uh, there that we do want to focus on uh, here so you know definitely um, you know something you want to keep an eye on now you can see here I actually uh, took my eye off the ball for like a couple seconds there and uh, he was able to heal uh, a little bit here um, but I'm actually gonna hopefully leave this guy up for when he brings out his ads 
uh, here so I can just kill him immediately. No, alright. I uh, thought that might work, but uh, I guess not. So he will get all his ads back, and then uh, we'll make sure to direct their attention properly this time. Uh, here. Uh, really important that you direct their attention, or you just end up spending a little longer uh, in this level than you'd want to. Yeah, I really do like this particular comp, uh, team comp here uh, on that end. Uh, it works really nicely. Uh, we do got to clear these ads out before these guys finish up. This should be... Yeah, this should be should be fine here uh, on this one. That was close, but I'm uh, glad that we were able to clear them out uh, there. And then, you know, you just slowly burn down the boss. Uh, here it is good to bring in more defensively inclined champions uh, there. So Battle's got a high defense, very high resistance uh, here as well. Uh, there, so um, you know he's he's kitted for clan boss. So is um, so is Iron Brago uh, there. So uh, you know both high defenses uh, there, and they're more built for sustainability, which is really good against uh, this particular kind of boss. So if you've got a good clan boss like um, team, uh, I don't mean an unkillable team. I mean a oh you could probably bring in an unkillable team in here. Uh, tell you the truth. Uh, there, but um, you know, you do got to watch out for his rage skill, so you do got to make sure you have enough um, damage output uh, to be able to, to get this guy get this guy down uh, here. Now, let's see if we can clear this guy up before he takes his next turn. Should be okay. There we go. All right, so. Uh, yeah, definitely important if you bring in an unkillable team that you have enough damage output to take care of the ads uh, or your day will be long and you'll be very frustrated uh, there. However, if you're building a damage mitigation team like I have been uh, there for Clan Boss, um, you know, you're actually much better off uh, here in terms of your your setup to beat this particular boss uh, because uh, yeah any any team made for a, a damage mitigation uh, does work really well uh, against this particular boss here yeah the synergy is really starting to line up now so these guys are uh, getting cleared off pretty quickly uh, here Now, um, he is seeing a bunch of our abilities on cooldown, so he's getting a little bit of those term, and you, term meter manipulation buffs uh, there, but uh, almost can't be helped uh, with the way that um, you know most of these characters are built out uh, there. Now, you could bring in someone uh, that could reduce hit or increase his cooldowns uh, that is something uh, a viable uh, way to go so if you guys have a champion uh, you know like Zephyr Sniper uh, there uh, who else uh, can you bring in uh, to something like that uh, let's see um, you know Turk the Wonder, Terra Beast, Basher, uh, Aquila, um, the new Doom Tower champion, uh, Fragment champion, uh, there. Um, I caught the Seared. Uh, all those guys. Ursula and Ironhide, surprisingly enough, uh, there on his A1 has the ability to do that uh, to reduce or increase cooldowns of enemy skills uh, there. So the, all, that skill is actually probably something that's going to increase the. The benefits, I guess, uh, or the uh, usability of a lot of those champions that I just mentioned. Uh, there, they're going to become uh, be coming out of people's vaults uh, there and uh, being put in, into teams, into team comps, uh, something like this, where you can just swap out uh, one of these champions. Um, so instead of having that extra heal like I have uh, there, you actually are reducing his cooldown, so you're not facing the adds as much. 
uh, there as uh, you would have uh, otherwise. All right, so there are different. There's tons and tons of different ways you can you can do this. I don't really have. Um, I, I mean, I have a, a few of those. Actually, I have most of the champions uh, that do that. I just haven't built them out uh, here. And I don't really intend to right now. Uh, their main reason that is uh, there is um, just because they would be a specialized uh, skill. And I have too many um, people like Doom Priest and... Um, you know, uh, a lot of like Fanax and uh, Raptor Drath, a lot of those particular characters that I can use in a lot of different places uh, there that I haven't even um, built out properly just yet. So a lot of people in the queue, uh, that was my best uh, turn, um, like amount of turns and then time yet uh, there. So um, Solar the Drakes, amazing if you get her i mean i know a lot of you guys probably have her if you've been playing six months or more but if you haven't been playing six months or more uh, there um, definitely save up your legendary books save up your um your five stars and your your potion so that as soon as she as soon as you get her six star her ascend her fully uh there and uh, max her out uh, she might even be worth if you're you know a little bit more early game to early mid game she might actually be worth 800 gems uh, there I'm not going to do 800 gems uh, I'm going to work her the old fashioned way uh, there uh, you know a little uh, you know huge amount of grind uh, there but um, she might be worth if you don't have the level of champions that I have and are doing you know every single fusion uh, that comes out uh, there if you don't have that then definitely do the 800 gems on her she will change your account 100 percent because of the way she's built out uh, there all right so um our mvp goes iron brago like amazing amazing champ and bad alcazar that seems to be a running thing here uh, bad alcazar and iron brago they just work so well together uh, there and um, yeah this is kind of a really well put together team uh, for this particular boss uh, here um, please let me know in the comments below what teams are you guys using to beat this boss uh, here have you even gotten to this boss where do you need help uh, here more than happy to uh, help you guys out uh, there are some uh, team comps ideals or just point you towards one of my videos uh, there in which, uh, you know, kind of explains in more detail and, you know, visually uh, how you can beat a certain boss. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe below. Uh, it helps me quite a bit. Hit that like button uh, there and hit the notification bell. Thank you so much for watching. Have a fantastic day. And, uh, ooh. I don't actually know what we'll be back with next. Actually, probably some tips uh, for doing uh, the newest fusion uh, under Priest Brogni uh, there. So look out for that video, and we will chat then.